Hi, welcome back to yet another session on operations research. In this specific session, I'm going to walk all of you through on Vogel's approximation method. This is the third method in the transportation problem series. By any chance, if you have missed the previous two videos, I have given the link in the description. Kindly check it out. We have got a problem which talks about obtaining a basic feasible solution for the transportation problem. We have gotten the factories, one, two, three, three factories, which can produce 300 units from factory one, 400 from factory two, and 500 from factory three. Demand comes from four different warehouses, and A warehouse has gotten a demand of 250, B has gotten a demand of 350, C has gotten a demand of 400, and D has gotten a demand of 200. Using the factory and the warehouse, they should supply the demand, yet at the same time, we don't want to overproduce. So first level, what do you do? As soon as you get any sort of a transportation problem, you need to check for the condition, whether it is a balanced transportation problem or not. To do this, what you have to do is, first take the demand, and then take the supply. If the demand is equivalent to supply, in our case, this is going to be capacity. If both are going to be equal to each other, then you can consider this as a balanced transportation problem. For example, let's say, I have gotten 250 plus 350, which amounts to 600 plus 400,000 plus 200, we have gotten 1,200. So in this case, the demand is 1,200. Let's go ahead and check for the supply as well. The capacity 300 plus 400, 700 plus 500. Again, we have gotten 1,200. We could come to a conclusion since the demand is equivalent to the supply, we have gotten a balanced transportation problem. First level, we have identified this condition. Once you have identified this condition, next level you can go ahead and start with whether it has gotten penalties or not. Since we are using a Vogel's approximation method, I am going to use a penalty. For identifying a penalty, you are going to look forward in the region of you are just going to consider monthly from the cost per unit over here you will be considering only the cost per unit over here and within this specific framework pertaining to the row you will consider which two values are the least similarly for the second row and then similarly for the third row once you have done with that you will start with the column first column second column, third column, and then fourth column. You will go ahead for these four. Now, let's say within the given limit, let's identify what is the minimum value over here. In the first row, we have gotten three, one, seven, and four. Out of this, which is the two least value, the first least value is one, and the second least value is three. These are the and the second least value. I'm going to detect 3 minus 1. We'll have to just write it outside. First row step. Now move on to the second row and identify what are the numbers you have gotten. We have gotten 2, 6, 5, and 9. Identify the two least number from this. The first least number is 2, and the second least number is 5. 5 minus 2, you will have 3. Write it outside. This is in terms of a cost factor that we are looking for. Now we immediately go to the third row. In third row, we have gotten 8, 3, 3 and 2. Out of which, which is the least one? Yes, you are right. We have gotten 2 as a least and then 3 as a least. 3 minus 2, we have gotten 1. This is the first row penalty that you have identified. Now, at the next level, we want to identify what is the column penalty that we have got. So, column wise now, look forward 3, 2, 8. So, which is the two least number 3 and 2. So, 3 minus 2, we would have 1. Similarly, over here, 1 is the least number and then 3 is the least number. 3 minus 1, 
we will have two over here. Next number look forward, next column 3 and then we have gotten 5. 5 minus 3, again we have gotten 2. Then here we have gotten 2, the first least number and the next least number, the second least number is 4 and 2. So 4 minus 2, we have gotten 2. So now you have already identified the penalty for the column and the row wise. Once you have identified the penalty, identify which penalty has got the highest. Is it the row wise or is it the column wise? Now we could see that here we have gotten 1, 2, 2 and 2. But we cannot come to a conclusion of a 2 because we need to compare the row also. In comparing the row, we have identified 3 is the highest penalty. So, I would mark in 3 over here. This is the first row that we are going to consider. In this specific row, when I say this specific row, we are going to consider. In this specific row, identify which has got the least value. You are right. We have gotten the least value at 2. So, I just go ahead and allocate the value over here. Now compare which is the max minimum, is it the demand or is it the capacity. We have gotten the demand to be minimum, so I am just taking 215. The demand for this location has already become zero because we have exhausted. The demand is 250 and at this particular level we have exhausted. So this is finished and when 400 minus 250, what would be the answer? Yes, you are right. We have gotten 150 over here. So, when we have fulfilled 250, the capacity 150 is available. So, first level we have done. Let's move on to the second level of a penalty checking. For the second level, now go ahead and identify which are the two least value. You cannot continue with the same. You need to go for the second one. So, between 1 and 4. 1, 7 and 4, 1 and 4. So 4 minus 1, the new penalty is 3 for the specific row. Then here we have gotten 6 and 5. 9 is a bigger number, so 6 minus 5, we have gotten 1 over here. And then here we have gotten 2 and then 3. So 3 minus 2, we have gotten 1. And let's go ahead and identify the column penalty as well. Now come to the column wise and then identify 1 and 3. So 1 and 3 here we have finished in so there is no penalty. 1 minus 3 you have gotten 2. Similarly here 3 and 5 is the minimum number. 5 minus 3 will give us 2. Similarly here 2 and then 4. 2 minus 4 we have gotten 2 over here. Compare the row penalty and then compare the column penalty. Identify which is the maximum penalty. You are right. The maximum penalty is at 3. And then find out which is the least. We have gotten 1 to be the least over here. So now compare the demand is 350 and the capacity is 300. So the capacity they can manufacture only 300 units. Though we have gotten a demand of 350, we can fulfill only 300 units from here. Take 300, which means the capacity of this factory is exhausted. No more capacity can be over here. So this also becomes zero. And here we have gotten 50. 350 minus 350 we have gotten. So this way also we have finished it. Now what happens is, this specific row penalty has become nil over here. Now, go ahead between the smallest number, 6 and 5 is the smallest number. 6 minus 5, we have gotten 1. Here, we have gotten 2 and 3. 3 minus 2, we have gotten 1. Similarly, let's go ahead for the column penalty. So, 6 minus 3, we have gotten 3. 5 minus 3, we have gotten 2. 9 minus 2, we have gotten 7. Now identify from the row and column which has got the highest penalty. The highest penalty stays at 7 over here. So go to this column and identify 
between 9 and 2 which is the minimum number 2 is the minimum number so we go ahead and allocate now the demand is 200 and they have gotten a capacity for 500 so what we can do we will be able to take only 200 from this specific point so this has become zero not only that the demand for this entire warehouse was only 200 and the factory can produce up till 500 so 300 units are left over here so now what has happened when you look into it this penalty has come out and between 6 and 5 we have gotten 1 then again between 3 and 3 we have gotten 1 then look forward to the next scenario 6 and 3 we have gotten 3 as a penalty 5 and 3 we have gotten 2 as a penalty and here there is no penalty between these two maximum penalty 3 is the maximum penalty go back here and identify the minimum cost 3 is the minimum cost over here so between 50 between 50 and between 300 we have gotten a demand of only 50 units from this specific scenario the capacity is 300 so the capacity becomes 250 now and here it is exhausted between 5 and 3 this is the only scenario that's left in the next level so here also the penalty has become nil nil and here also the penalty has become nil over here and no more we can identify now when you look into the penalty at this level we have gotten only two cells remaining which is at the column and the column penalties between five and three the difference is going to be two which is the minimum identify the cell which contains the minimum 300 is the minimum and when you look into this scenario we have gotten 250 for this specific cell it's 250 and over here we have gotten 400 whichever is minimum 250 is minimum so park in 250 this 250 will become zero and this 400 will become 150 the only cell that is left at this particular position is this one 150 now when you check into it it should actually tell you for example let's say here in this specific row the capacity is 300 we got 300 in this specific row we have gotten capacity of 400 250 plus 150 will give us 400 then here the capacity is 500 so 200 250 and then 50 give us 500 now come to the column wise 250 was the demand and we have fulfilled and here it was 350 so 350 will give us 350 150 plus 200 will give 400 200 and 200 which means we have completely exhausted the demand as well as the capacity now that we have satisfied all the condition next level we need to look forward whether this is degenerating problem or not how would you find us we have gotten a rule called m plus n minus one now check forward to how many number of rows you have gotten three rows and how many number of columns four columns so you have gotten four plus three seven so put together this four plus three you have gotten seven minus one so seven minus one you have need to have six cents or another way the independent cell now check forward first cell second cell third cell fourth cell fifth cell and sixth cell so exactly you have gotten so you could make out this is a non-degenerating problem which means this is the solution that we have identified now we have to calculate the total cost focus on the end portion one three hundred then two rupees into 250 plus 5 into 150 plus 3 into 50 plus 3 into 250 plus 2 into 200 so this is going to give us a cost of 300 plus 500 plus 750 plus 150 plus 750 plus 400 this is going to give us a total of 2850 
so according to the Wobbles approximation method. Using this capacity and for the given demand, the cost will be 2850 That's it. Yes, I can hear that. It's so easy to work on. I'm sure all of you have enjoyed the video. Should you have any doubts, please post it in the comment box. I'm happy to answer it. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Karpakam signing off. Good day.